You know, when you're thinking evil thoughts, God's sorry he made you. When you're thinking evil thoughts all the time, you, you look at pornography, you, you're full of hate, greed, think plotting how to get back at somebody, how to punish someone. God looks at you and he says, I'm sorry I made you. What really grieves me is you're gonna end up in hell and I'm really sorry. That's beautifully. All right, I want to talk to you about something I've been thinking about. You know, in my world, my family, my friends, there's just no negativity. And uh, a story like this, telling you a story like this is hard to tell because you just don't want to go there. But in Genesis chapter six, uh, something happened that was uh, tragic. The Bible says that men began to multiply on the face of the earth and sons and daughters were born unto them. And the sons of God saw the daughters of men and took them wives of all which they chose. And uh, the offspring, he said, were men of renown. They were unusually strong, unusually big, unusually massive, and they're unusually intelligent. It said they became mighty men of old, men of renown. Everybody knew them. The thing that stood out about them was that they were giants. Uh, 10, 11, and 12 foot tall, massive. They would probably weigh 1,200 pounds, 1,500 pounds apiece. And they were men of war. They conquered. They actually, uh, in the Americas, they ate people. And they were cannibals. And so God was very upset because these sons of God are angels. Now, if you have the fairy tale image of what an angel is from religious art, then you won't understand it. But angels are actually another planet, another place in the universe, another species that God created. They don't have wings. Never single time in the Bible do angels have wings. Cherubim do, but not angels. Uh, they are male. They're strong. They're just human looking, but bigger and more handsome, more powerful than us. And they actually travel in ships. You read it in Ezekiel chapter one through chapter 10. They travel in flying saucers uh, that create coals of fire as they travel. And so most people don't realize this, but now that upset God, but what really upset him was the result of this was that he said, every imagination of the thoughts of the hearts of men were only evil continually, only evil continually. And when God saw that evil in man and that mixed breeding, he said, I'll destroy man whom I've created from off the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping things. God, it said, God said, it repenteth me that I've made man on the earth. In other words, God says to the angels, I'm using my imagination here. God says to the angels, I, I'm, I'm, it just makes me sick. Well, why are you so sad? Angel says to God, God says, I look down and see what I've created and I made a mistake. It's just, it's too bad. It's, it's beyond acceptable. I'm gonna have to kill every one of them. I'm gonna wipe the planet clean completely. I'm gonna kill everything. I'm even gonna kill the bugs and the spiders and the lizards and the little sparrows and the parakeets and the dogs and the cats. Everything is gonna die because this planet is totally corrupt because everything that men think is evil. All the time they imagine evil. 
The Bible says another place that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Remember Jesus said, you say you not to commit adultery, but I say unto you, if you lust in your heart after a woman, have to put, add man to that in these days. He said, you committed adultery already in your heart. You've heard it said, Jesus said, that you shall not murder, but I say unto you, if you hate your brother, you committed murder already in your heart. So we live in that time now. We live in a time when I don't know if the angels are cohabitating with women. I think they've probably gotten past that mostly. But every imagination of the thoughts of the heart are evil wherever you go. I go out and talk to a guy the other day, claimed to be an atheist. Every imagination of the thought of his heart was evil. He, he imagined evil about us Christians. He imagined that we were something we were not. He couldn't conceive of righteousness and goodness and purity. But God was grieved and said, I'm going to kill all of them. It repented me. In other words, God, God repented that he made man on the earth, it says there in Genesis 6. But then there was one man, Noah, that the Bible said he was perfect in his generations. That is his offsprings. He didn't have any angelic blood in his background anywhere. He was a pure human. And so were his daughter-in-laws and his sons, of course, and his wife. So the Bible said, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now he was a sinner. We find him sinning later quite, quite much. So he was a sinner, but he was a pure blood sinner. And God said, I'm going to, I'm going to have grace on him. So he said to Noah, no, I want you to build a big box, a floating box called an ark. It wasn't a ship. It was just a big floating box. Seal it the inside and outside with pitch, tar, uh, typical way of building a boat. And he said, make it three stories high, uh, 450 to 600 feet long. And then I'm, I'm going to bring two of every animal on the face of the earth. Now, he didn't bring, he didn't bring wolves, dogs, and coyotes. He brought one pair, which would breed into coyotes and so forth. And same thing with birds. So there was some adaptation that took place later that divided up the different species, different kinds. But he took all the kinds into there, and they weren't all big adults like giraffes. He probably took a couple little baby giraffes. And rhinoceroses, probably took a little couple of little baby rhinoceroses. But he took two of every kind except the clean animals, that is animals you could eat, and he took seven of those. And they got on this ark, God closed it up and sent a flood, and sure enough, it killed everything on the earth. Water went above the mountains because the fountains of the deep broke up. That is, what was in the earth broke up, the water in the earth. A lot more water down underneath the ground there is in the oceans. And it broke up and, and, and it brought, imagine squeezing a sponge. God must have squeezed the earth, which changed some mountains, changed some rivers and streams and valleys. And when it was over with, the earth was a different place. The ark after over a year settled on Mount Ararat. It was, it's actually quite a few mountains are called Ararat up there. And there, Noah and his family started a new life. And here we are today, back where we were in Noah's day, at least as far as the every thought of the heart is evil. You know, when you're thinking evil thoughts, God's sorry he made you. When you're thinking evil thoughts all the time, you, you look at pornography, you, you're full of hate, greed, Think plotting how to get back at somebody, how to punish someone. God looks at you and he says, I'm sorry I made you. What really grieves me is you're going to end up in hell and I'm really sorry. But a few people, few of us have found grace in the eyes of the Lord. We don't deserve it. We, we've, we, we've thought evil equally, still do sometimes. But God has sent Jesus to die in our place and he's forgiven us. And now we fill our days with 
good thoughts. Thoughts like, hey, building a jet boat from scratch out of junk. Uh, like growing a good garden. I was just showing off my beautiful garden, uh, eating all those raw vegetables and some cooked, and it's a beautiful thing. Uh, grandkids, been spending a lot of time with the grandkids. Beautiful grandkids, great grandkids. Had, uh, had about uh, 10 of them in the house, I think, yesterday, all screaming and hollering, dogs barking. It was a great time. That's the reason I went up in my room got, <laughs> and shut the door for a little while. So we had, a, we had a great time with all the kids, and there's still some there now. Now, I want to encourage you to have the good life. I want to encourage you to have a life of peace and love and prosperity. I don't mean financial, but I just mean prosper in your soul, prosper in your life, be full of peace and joy and all kinds of goodness. And you do that, and you'll, you'll get all right financially too. You may not get rich, but you'll do okay because you'll be a hard worker. So I'm going to stop there and get back to my, working on my boat here. I'm installing the motor. I actually already have installed it in the pump and um, doing some modification to get it ready to, for the final installation. And then I'm going to go down to a river full of rocks and logs, jump the rocks, jump the logs at about 40 miles an hour, just skimming across the top in my jet boat. All right. See you next time.